Hi there everyone, my name is Dave West, I hope we're all doing well. So welcome back to the ultimate video test and this evening I'm checking out the Galaxy S22 Ultra in low light conditions. But with all ultimate video tests I'll leave all of the main camera specifications down in the description and I'll just run through some of the high level features throughout this video to help save you some time. So starting off as always then with the front facing camera and this is a 40 megapixel fixed focus camera and this can record video up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Now currently recording at 4K at 30 frames per second. And this has built-in electronic image stabilization. Now you can toggle that on or off in the settings, but I'll just leave it on for this video. And it records in stereo sound as well. Now Samsung has introduced on the S22 series what they call nightography. And apparently, this also counts for video, not just for still photography. But I'll let you be the judge of that, and you let me know what you think of the video quality so far. All right, so this is 4K at 60 frames per second then. Now, usually it's actually still as bright as 4K at 30 frames per second. Usually if you drop down, or drop up, sorry, or take it up to 60, I beg your pardon, then you'll see a noticeable drop in the amount of light hitting the camera. But I suspect Samsung is doing some dynamic frame rate changes with the software on the phone to allow more light into the sensor. But just having a look around, I mean, looking through the viewfinder, the image quality doesn't look that amazing, if I'm being perfectly honest. But again, playback may be a lot better. So if you're watching this and it doesn't look as crappy as I can see in, in the viewfinder, then please let me know down in the comments. All right, so spinning around to the rear cameras then again, starting at 4K at 30 frames per second. And this is the ultra wide camera. And this is a 16 megapixel fixed focus camera. Well, it has sort of got kind of autofocus built into it, but it's a much shallower depth of field with the autofocus, not like the main camera. Now, even though using the ultra wide angle camera although it still looks a bit dark you can make out some shadow detail off to my left which usually just gets crushed out because of the vignetting of the ultra wide lens obviously as it gets wider at the edges there's less and less light to play with especially in low light conditions but looking through the viewfinder here it doesn't look too bad at all it's what i would call usable video if you do need to use it for a nighttime environment. Now, if you wonder if you can see by my shadow there, if I'm using a stabilizer, I'm not. This is just my Joby Gorilla Pod, which I just perched the phone on to help keep it at arm's length. I don't have a case for the phone, so I don't particularly want to drop it because it's not fine, not mine. Which leads me quickly to say a big thanks to Vodafone for supplying the S32 Ultra for the purpose of this test. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can see all of the latest deals from Vodafone on their website for this handset. Now, the good thing is with the S22 Ultra is that you can switch cameras as you're recording. So rather than having to stop and then start recording again, you can just choose each camera as you go and the recording is totally interrupted. Now you can see straight away with the main camera that the image quality is vastly improved. You've got much more light to every corner of the image. Now the main camera is a 108 megapixel autofocus camera. Now for video, obviously, it's using that resolution to get you really nice, crisp 4K video. Now I suppose this is more than likely the lens which Samsung is advertising its nightography function. You can see it's dragging in loads of light into the camera and rendering this nighttime scene really well. Now if you just check out autofocus, you can see it gets a nice lock on the subject whilst keeping the background nice and blurred, especially with this 108 megapixel camera. We get a really nice shallow depth of field and nice smooth autofocus as it moves from subject to the main scene around me. So, of 
got a nice big bright subject up in the distance which is the moon now you can see it's really maxing out the capabilities of the cameras now you can tap and then reduce the exposure but the moon is super bright this evening so it's it's too much even for just using the decreased exposure in the camera and you can see this zoom camera is not ideal especially in those darker areas but if I move to slightly better light you can see that the image isn't too bad at all now these optical zoom cameras so you've got a three times telephoto camera and also a ten times telephoto camera and both are 10 megapixel sensors and these have been carried over from the Galaxy S21 Ultra but something I've tweaked the software to get better performance across the board and the good thing is is that the electronic image stabilization works with both of the telephoto cameras well you do have to be much more careful with footsteps because because it's zoomed in every footstep is just a little bit more exaggerated when you move so let's try the 10 times camera then and again looking at the moon so you can see it's really not ideal even if I drag the exposure slider down to the lowest good thing is though if you want to take still photos I suspect there's an element of cheating if you do zoom in on the moon it just sort of, sort of looks magically amazing so they may be using some AI to superficially add the moon onto the image but for video not really not really that ideal but if I move to slightly less bright subject you can see it does a pretty decent job and if I walk you can see there every footstep is really exaggerated but you do get that nice super shallow depth of field because it's everything just looks like it's on one plane rather than the sort of 3d depth effect you would get from just looking at it with your eyes so just to show you how far away that is there's the ultra wide camera and if you select the 10x camera you can go all the way up to 20 times zoom which as you can see in this light if you keep still it's just about usable but unless you're in a really bright well lit environment at night so a show or where there's lots and lots of street lighting and you just want to do a static shot then the best you can of 20 times zoom so back we go to the ultra wide one thing I just wanted to mention is uh, in the settings you get audio zoom from the microphones so just to give you an idea I've got it switched on now so this is the ultra wide camera and as I then push the 10x lens you should be able to get that the volume of this car pass in is relative to the distance of the camera which is a pretty neat feature nothing new but it's nice to have it there and again just like the stabilization that could be toggled on or off in the advanced settings menu if you wish so there's a rundown then of 30 frames per second from both the front and rear cameras up to 10 times zoom and then 20 times digital zoom Let's check out 60 frames per second now and see how that looks all right so ultra wide lens again then first now one thing i do want to mention is because someone's bound to mention it is that in the options menu you have the auto frames per second option i've switched that off just to give you an idea of how the 60 frames per second video looks without any automatic alteration of the frame rate so this is actually 60 frames per second so just wait for this car to move past and you can see nice smooth motion no jitters which is nice and if i pan the camera around you can see there nice smooth handling of video as i pan around the scene no jitters or anything which is I did see one there, I beg your pardon, just going past that lamppost. But it's kept to a minimum and is as you would expect for a top end flagship device like this. The only thing I do need to mention is at 60 frames per second, you cannot switch lenses on the fly. There is a strange form of digital zoom going on when using the ultra wide camera, but it's purely digital and looks a bit crappy as you can see there. So main lens now then, and again 4K at 60 frames per second. 
and again with the auto frames per second option switched off I will show you a section in a moment just to show you how that works and you get nice smooth electronic image stabilization using all of the lenses which is great and image quality is pretty decent I mean you can just about make the color gradation of the sky up, up in the background there very noisy as you can see but this test is designed to show you just how well the phone copes in these super low light conditions now looking out towards the field you can see some of the stars up in the sky there cast your mind back five years and this kind of thing would have been a complete impossibility with a smartphone when recording with video but now we're kind of getting to that point where you can get a reasonably good rendition of the scene you're looking at albeit not quite perfect because there's lots of noise in the image but as far as that I can see that is true to life I'm just being perfectly honest here that is all I can see in front of me good stuff okay so the three times zoom lens then uh, 4k at 60 now it's not confirmed and I don't know if this is a fact or not but I would hazard a guess that this is having some assistance from the main lens and we're just cropping in now rather than having the proper three times optical zoom that you would get at 4k 30 frames per second so you get the effect of the shallow depth of field with the zoom lens but I think the main lens is also assisting in some way here I can't really confirm that but it's noticeably different to when using 4k 30 typical of most smartphone cameras to be honest when you get to 60 fps if you're trying to zoom in it'll usually just intelligently crop in off the main lens because that is the one that can handle the most light at 60 frames per second and finally 4k 60 using the 10 times lens now we're getting lots of floaties in the camera here but to give you an idea of the stabilization you can see there it's not brilliant I mean it's smooth but it just you really have to keep a good hold on the camera but it's just to give you an idea of how the zoom works at 10 times at 4k 60 you can see up in the distance there not really that ideal and if I just spin around and look further down the street again not brilliant and it's really lacking in clarity and details and even exposure so I think this gets uh, a thumbs down from me better in daylight which I will do a separate test for so there is all of the lenses then at 4k 60 let me know what you think down in the comments all right so moving on to some of the additional modes that are available on the s22 ultra so this is super steady mode been around for a good few years now so this is a staple of the samsung galaxy line from the s series and note now this records at up to 60 frames per second but only at 1080p now you can use the ultra wide and also the main camera and you can switch them on the go so this is the ultra wide camera using super steady mode at 1080p 30 and what this does is just crops in that little bit extra and then uses that information you can't see around the image to help really stabilize the image just that little bit more to be perfectly honest these modes seem a little bit redundant these days because the stabilization from the just the main standard camera mode is so good that i don't know these just feel like features added on just for the sake of it but for those of you who are into your action then this might have some value to you all right so here's the main camera using super steady mode at 1080p 30. Um, if i'm being perfectly honest it looks really rubbish um it just there's loads and loads of noise and even though it's at 30 frames per second um i suspect the algorithm being used for the electronic image stabilization just to make it like super steady uh, is causing this drastic drop in quality on the image just loads and loads of mosquito noise in the image there as you can see uh, if it's anything like the s21 ultra 
uh, that had a really low bitrate for its super steady video so I'm guessing that may be the case here but just for the sake of completeness I wanted to show you this as part of the ultimate video test so just for comparison then here here is 1080p at 60 using super steady mode and this is the ultra wide camera and if I switch to the main camera things don't really improve we're just seeing things just that little bit closer uh, but if I just walk forward you can see a difference the stabilization is a bit more solid and this a little less footsteppy than using the main camera but I'll be perfectly honest in low light I think this is a little bit of a write-off unless we were on an F1 circuit covered in floodlights but there we go there is super stable mode using super steady sorry that belongs to another brand and um, there's super steady mode at 1080p 30 and 1080p 60. now very briefly this is 4k 60 using the auto fps option and you can see the phone has automatically detected lower light conditions and has dropped the frame rate now, when I go to edit this video, I'll check out the values for this particular video and I'll flush them up on screen to show you what the exact frame rate is on this section of the video. So there's the ultra wide and here is the main camera. So if I wave my hand in front, you can definitely see it's not 60 FPS because it's not as smooth as you would expect for 4K 60, but really handy if you're in a sort of a mixed light environment so the, the phone will just intelligently choose for you whether it can handle 60 fps with the amount of light that is available but in case somebody wanted to ask this is how it looks using the auto fps option and if i point the camera out into the field you can see dragging in much more light there you can even see the trees just in front of me and some of these stars which are starting to show themselves out in the sky in the distance there and even distant street lighting up ahead and houses as well in the shadows so there we go that is auto FPS option all right so this is portrait video mode on the Galaxy S22 Ultra so this is using the rear camera now if you use the front facing camera it just cannot drag in enough light to make it usable in this low light situation but it does seem that the main camera on the back can handle it really well so this is just to give you an idea of how the portrait function works for video in low light so you still get the benefit of electronic image stabilization but this records only at 1080p at 30 frames per second but for the use case for it i think the resolution doesn't really matter that much it's the effect i think which means the most and the video quality is actually pretty decent as well even in lower light conditions all right so that's the end then of the galaxy s22 ultra ultimate video test in low light conditions so overall just a very sort of soft upgrade for video from the galaxy s21 ultra but as flagship phones go, this is probably up there with the best in terms of video recording on Android. And as always, you let me know what you think down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos coming like this on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my ultimate video test for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. My name is Dave West and I'll catch you guys later.